Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here. It is the 22nd of August, Tuesday morning. Yesterday we had Nathan all day, so nothing got done down here in the printer dungeon. But I am back now, and I want to talk a little bit about printing on matte media on the Pro 1000 from Canon. Now, let's talk before we do that about the Pro 1, the Pro 10, and the 9500 Mark II from Canon, how they handle the use of matte black ink when you choose matte media. Normally, if you just choose the normal matte media from the drop-down menu, not the fine art menu, it will only choose photo black. Now that has been pre-programmed by the engineers at Canon, and I don't know what that is about, but it does not produce your deepest blacks when you're printing, of course, with photo black, because it's not as dense as matte black is. So in order for you to be able to trigger the use of matte black ink, when you're printing on matte media, you have to choose fine art setting, and that will impose, regardless of what you choose, a 30 to 35 millimeter border on the leading and the trailing edge. And they say that that is to prevent head strikes. Well, really, I'm not too sure about that, but at least, you know, maybe there's some truth to that. And the problem is that you have to accept that. Now, there are ways if you are refilling to avoid that. And those little tricks work sort of okay, but you just go ahead and choose the fine art matte media and it will automatically trigger the correct black ink. Well, I thought that the Pro 1000 took care of that and it was no longer gonna be the case, but apparently not. I chose matte media on the regular photo paper menu. Then I chose letter size and when I went to print, it did not allow me to do so. It told me that I had to use the imposed border. Okay, so apparently that has not been changed. Regardless of that, the results were great. Even when you chose the matte media on the Pro 1, Pro 10, it seemed like the blacks were just never as deep as they should have been. Now, there are other choices in the fine art setting, but I just simply could never get it to be perfect. I had to do some special profiling, and that brought everything back at the correct level that I expect those blacks to be when using matte media. Here we have Pro Luster. My standard image, perfectly neutral and linear across from black to white. And yeah, this is what I expect. By the way, those two greens, yeah, they're almost identical. This is a Pro Photo RGB image, and I totally forgot about that when I did that previous video. We'll talk about that some other time. A very good viewer, watcher, an expert explained that to me. So here we go. We're going to go over to the matte rendition. This is Canon Pro Matte. This is letting just simply letting the driver control color. I have not even calibrated this paper to the printer yet. So the difference that I see are very, very subtle. This is a little bit warmer, not as dead cold neutral as this one is. By the way, this one is calibrated, the Pro Luster. Again, still we have a nice neutral and linear black to white. Here we have identical looking squares, the same. Everything else looks practically the same. I mean, most people would not be able to tell the difference. Of course, you have the difference between the sheen of the paper and the matte look. But again, the black is very strong, very deep. And I am just thrilled to be able to produce finally on a Canon matte prints that are just fabulous and as full of pop as those done on a paper with a shine or a gloss. That is it. Unfortunately, you still have to trigger that matte black by choosing that border setting, which is a fine art only setting. And you can print either through the front or the rear feeder or through the manual feeder in the back which by the way, somebody told me I would not have enough room on my table. I do, actually, I do. It should be absolutely no problem. So that is it. Very quick video. Yes, it will trigger those borders. There's nothing else you could do about it. 
Um, the trick that I mentioned earlier is that you take a photo black cartridge for the Pro 10 and you, instead of putting photo ink in it, photo black ink, you put matte black ink. And then you just choose matte on your drop down menu, not the fine art, and put your fine art paper in there. And it might not come out perfect because the profiles are going to be different, you see. So, but then at that point, it will just print using what it thinks is photo black, but instead it is actually matte black. And the profiles that Precision Colors has done for the Pro 10 and the 9500 Mark II, by the way, the same thing occurs there as well, were done using that trick. So they expect you, the user, to also have a separate cartridge loaded with matte black rather than photo black, and you will have to physically swap these cards. On the Pro 1, that is impossible to do because of the ink lines. It takes forever to push out the ink, but on the Pro 10, piece of cake, one cleaning cycle, possibly even the single purge cycle that occurs when you switch one cart, will be plenty to flush out the photo black ink and bring that matte black ink into play. And if you're gonna do a lot of matte work and you don't want those borders, save your matte work until you need to print and then just print 30, 40, whatever number of prints you need to make and that way you can just knock that out in one swoop and then switch back to photo black, do a cleaning cycle, and that will bring you back to photo black or glossy paper type printing. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. We are going to be about a month away, one more month, to 8,000 subscribers. We'll pop some Pepsi again or whatever drink you wish me to have here. I know somebody criticized me about drinking Pepsi. I love that stuff. I like it better than Coke. It's my only bad habit. All right. Happy printing, everybody. Bye-bye. Oh, by the way, I got a little box Saturday that I haven't spoken about yet, but that's coming up next. Thank you once again. Happy printing. Bye-bye.